Well, hello everybody, it's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and I'm back after a couple of weeks off. Um, off is not the right word, probably, since I was working, but certainly I wasn't able to join you guys on the last couple of Sunday nights. So, if you have joined me tonight, I appreciate your patience, and I appreciate you coming back. So, give me a second, and let me double check that I'm transmitting. Aha, I am, and we've got people showing up. Hey, Amy. Thank you very much. Hi, Mary. Hi from California. I'm still here. Yes. Hello, Patty Joe and Nancy and Barbara. I'm so glad y'all could join and I am sorry it's taken me so long to come back. Hey, Patricia. Hi, Jean and Sharon. Thank you for coming back. Hi, Karen and Susan and Karen Finkel. Still traveling, I guess. Hello, Kay and Fran and Pam. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all joining. All right, <laughs> separation anxiety. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna see if I can still do this. It's been a minute. I hope I hope uh, Facebook Live videos aren't a frangible skill. Hi, Arlene and Shirley. Hi, Rosie. Um, you know what? I have had a good Sunday. I've made a bunch of cards um, to get ready for the week because it's just about time to start packing. Yay, packing! I'm so excited. I'm ready to go home. Ready, ready, ready. Hey, Jean. Um, but I didn't get up until like 6.30, which is pretty late for me, really, if you consider that my alarm has been going off at 4. Um, and I stayed in bed and drank two cups of coffee and watched some TV, and then I took another little nap, and then I made my cards, and then I was very proud of myself. I hope you will be, too. I went and worked out on the treadmill for 45 minutes this afternoon. Um, so... Things are things are going well today, I'm pleased. Hey, Denise and Denise and Karen and Holly and Karen. Um, got a bunch of Holly, bunch of Karens and a bunch of Denises, so I hope I said hello to everybody. Hi, Karen. All right, so this is the card. We'll go ahead and get started. This is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of this morning. It uses a couple of oldies but goodies, some of my favorite things, and a couple of new stamp sets from the 2018 holiday catalog that I think you are going to love. Yes, ma'am, Mary, it was a very good time. Hi, Patricia, I'm glad that you are able to join and, and see us live for the first time. Appreciate that. Um, so anyway, I do think you're gonna love these. It's use, it uses one of my favorite color combinations, um, some crumb cake, cherry cobbler, and my favorite returning color, Mossy Meadow. And we have a couple of stamp sets to show you. You'll see we're going to use the sentiment from the new cross-stitched Christmas set. We're going to use the little pine bow and pine cone from Winter Woods and ooh, one of my very favorite new background stamps in this catalog buffalo check love me some plaid and to be able to make it in any color i want well there you have it then hey jenny and mary and paula thank you very much hi lori all right so let's get started shall we we're going to use our stamparatus today a few times over i've got some card cuts made and these will all be on my website tomorrow so not to worry couple of uh, mossy meadow mats and some pieces of crumb cake although as I was cutting it occurred to me looks to me like I made the front of this sample with Sahara sand and the inside with crumb cake so <laughs> we're not gonna repeat that we're gonna do crumb cake and crumb cake but what I will show you is you could also make this with Sahara sand and Sahara sand and Actually, I don't think unless somebody was really paying attention, they would go, oh my gosh, she used Sahara sand on the front and crumb cake on the inside. But try to keep it the same when you make this, okay? <laughs> uh, Amy, exactly correct. Oopsie. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we've got a couple of pieces of um, crumb cake that we're going to use to stamp our plaid on. And then for the inner liner, let me show you the inside. I went ahead and, and did the inside pretty similar to the front. And then I have two pieces of crumb cake that I've already embossed in the Pinewood Plank Dynamic Teeth. And you'll see I've cut a square out of the middle because I, I, this is my very last piece of crumb cake here and I refuse to buy a new, a new package until I get home because I know I have more at home. So I've cut out a little piece to make our sentiment, all right? 
So let us get started, shall we? Alrighty. So I'm going to set this aside so I don't get anything all over it. First thing we're going to do is stamp our buffalo check. And I'm going to use my Stamparatus because background stamps can be large and in charge, but they can also be a bit on the persnickety side, right? Because as we know, it can be hard to get a good solid image. So the Stamparatus is parfait for doing just that. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make myself some corners because I'm not going to use my magnets because my background set stamp takes up the entire piece of the sheet, right? So I need to be able to put it back. Hey, Kathy, driving home to Pasadena. We'll have a safe trip. All right, so let's pull this little dude out. We're going to lay him about as square as we can. I decided after getting head up about it on my sample that I wasn't going to just be all proclaimed about whether it was exactly perfectly straight. We'll pick that up. And then I'm going to take out, so you'll see in here I have my magnetic piece that I got from Stampin' Storage, and that helps me a lot with getting up into the corners, but I've also got the piece that comes with the Stamparatus, which is the foam piece, and you use that with your photopolymer stamp. So since the background stamp is a rubber stamp, I'm taking it out, keeping that in, and see why I made those corners? So I can put it right back where it belongs. All right, now, I'm gonna ink this up with our Mer uh, Merry Meadow. <laughs> All right, Mossy Meadow. Mary, I haven't used the creative corners, but perhaps that would be helpful. All right. Now you have to excuse me. I am busily still attempting to get over the cold that I had from the cruise. It takes me a while to do that. I'm not sure why. All right, so here we go. All inked up. I'm going to press all over. Alrighty. We'll pick him up. And let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Well, I don't love that, so I'm going to do it again. Ah, the joy of the Stamparatus. I can put him right back in his corners. Ink this stamp up again. And on this next one, I'm going to stand up and give it a good press. That'll help. That'll tell it. Also, it will make my watch happy if I stand up for a minute. Here we go. I've gotten to where I'm just terribly competitive with my watch. It annoys me no end if I don't close all my rings every day. So I guess it's doing its job, right? Okay. Give that a good push. You are correct, Amy. You could also cut oversize and then cut it down, but um, but I did not. Okay, so I'm leaving it like that. I could actually ink up and stamp again, but I'm going to leave it a little bit um, more rustic. Okay, I'm going to clean that off good and set it aside. And then I'm going to pick this up and put my foam back because while I have my Stamparatus out, why don't I go ahead and do my Sentimente. I'm going to do my Sentimente. And that is from the new Cross Stitch Christmas set. Isn't this so pretty? Hey Lenny, good to see you. Oh, I don't need that one. Hi, Angie. All right, so we're going to put, I'm not sure why I was getting all head up about what's, whether to put it right side up or not, because it doesn't matter, but I did. Okay, and we'll pick him up along with everything else. All right. 
and ink him. This is also in Mossy Meadow. And here's just a tip. Although this piece of this piece of cardstock isn't big enough to be a problem, do clean up your acrylic panel. Ask me why. There we go. All right. All right, that's a good stamp. I'm gonna take it and run. And let's clean him off right quick. Hey, Sharon. Hi, Chris from Australia. My goodness, thank you for joining us. I have no idea what day or time it is there, but I'm hoping you're not up too early or up too late to watch us. But I thank you for it. All right. Now, the Stamparatus is gonna come back a little later, but we will um, we'll put him aside for right now. Put my magnetas away. All right, let us commensurate, shall we? I'm asking you why what? I'm sorry, Karen, I'm not sure what you're asking me why on. So let's uh, help me out there. Okay, so I started with this piece. You can see that this is the card front, right? I started with it at about four by five and an eighth, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tear it down to about three and a half by four and a half. And that's not rocket science, so I'm not gonna get too head up about it. One thing I will tell you is I like to try to tear all the same direction because you'll see how you, you've got the rough edge here, but on the back side you have kind of a smoother edge. So, um, I like to tear them all from the same direction. All right, okay, because then when I sponge it, which I'm gonna do shortly, it will look uniformly vintageized, which might be kind of a conundrum or an oxymoron, a contradiction in terms, however you'd like to consider it. All right, so like I said, the approximate size of my sample comes down to three and a half by four and a half, but really what matters is how does it look? Hey, Jennifer, glad you could join. Hi, Peggy. Hey, Claudia, I'm glad you're having a good time so far. Welcome for your first go. So you can see what we're gonna do here. This is gonna be our layers, like so. And I'm gonna cut him down in just a second. I tend to um, cut my embossed pieces a little bigger than I need and then cut them down because when you squish them in the embossing folders, it can sometimes screw up your measurements is. So I'm going to take this down to my desired three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And that's already there, so we're good. Let's do the other one too while we got it out here. Okay. And double check, five and an eighth. Yes, perfect, okay. All right, so here's how the layers are gonna look. Like so. And then this is gonna lay slightly cockamamie to give kind of a rustic look like that. Yes, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little sponging right quick. Hi, Sandra, nice to see you. I've never cleaned up the ink from the Stamparatus, so I'm wondering what happened, because you said ask, oh, because, sorry, <laughs> I get you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Because I have left, I have had my stamp here and inked it and gotten ink on this part, and then when I bring it over and push it down, I get ink on my panel in a place that I didn't want. So. So I have learned the lesson the hard way, which is clean up my Stamparatus because I am a piggy. And <laughs> I prefer to not have to redo things 12 times. All right, so I'm gonna use a sponge dauber and some crumb cake, and I'm just gonna touch the edges of my card front, which is really kind of my mat, yeah? 
And you can see that also very nicely pulls out that wood grain, which is nice. I like that. I do love this embossing folder. It's one of my very favorite things. It just makes such a nice rustic counterpoint to other things. And what I'm really getting to where I like is having a little bit of rustic and a little bit of bling like I've done on this where I've put in that glimmer paper. So rustic and bling together um, is, is one of the things that makes Mary happy about cards. All right. So let's go ahead and get this, uh, the edges of this done as well. And you can do it as much or as little as you like. It's your card, right? Hey, Sue, glad you could join. Yes, Karen, take take my advice. My theory is there's those of us who have inked our panels where we didn't want to by not tidying up our stamparatus and those that will. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do right now. We're gonna pull that out a little bit later and repeat the process. Now, what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna put this on with a little bit of liquid glue. Where are you, liquid glue? There you are. <laughs> Jean, just order the stamp set. Just give it up, kid. It's a great stamp. Who doesn't want plaid? And I am just certain sure that Stampin' Up! will continue this beautiful plaid stamp into the next into the next go around. Surely they've gotten the hint from all of us who've said plaid, 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 plaid. Give us plaid, we need plaid so very bad. Okay, now let us go ahead and make some, oh well here, let's take this first. So I'm gonna cut this, uh, actually I'm tearing this down to make my sentiment. Remember, I stamped this when I first had my Stamparatus out. I'm just gonna do a little bit of tearing around because it looks right to me. And actually, I'm gonna tear that down a little more. I don't want it too huge. Yeah, that looks about right. We'll give it another little tear here. Okay. Now, you don't have to get too head up about it being perfect, I don't actually think, because the whole point of vintage-izing is for it to look a little bit handmade, right? So let's give this a sponge. I could see it with Easter colors. Absolutely, the card that I made beginning of the Last week, I used Daffodil Delight, and it turned out quite nice, actually. Very pretty. It's a little bit of mint macaron accents on the card. All right, give that a little go. Now, I'm also, I'm using some of the new in the holiday catalog, striped burlap trim, and that is white and crumb cakey burlap and cherry cobbler. And it's a little too white for me, so... Hey Beverly, thank you for joining. It's a little too white for me, so I'm toning it down a little bit with my dauber and my crumb cake. Because it just was too white. So, there we go. Now it's not too white, is it? Okay. And that can dry while we put our goodies away and get rid of some of this trash. Some of this trash right here. The trash is in my way. See how I tidied that up? I really want you to think that I'm a nice, tidy stamper. And the truth of the matter is that is so not true. So not true. All right, so let us put this down with... <laughs> hey, Mary, if you want to order now, I can hook you up, kid. I can hook you up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna start by using a piece of, a piece, a piece of glue. I'm gonna use a piece of glue. 
I'm gonna use a little bit of the liquid glue and just lay it down on the card front. Yes, in case you guys didn't know, if you wanna order now, you can sign up to be a demonstrator, a hobbyist or a business demonstrator, doesn't matter. And you can order items out of this catalog as part of your starter kit. So kind of a good deal, just throwing it out there. All right, now before we joined, I did a little bit of work on my um, on my big shot, and I cut out some pine boughs from the Pretty Pines Thinlets, and a beautiful pine cone from, look at how pretty this is, you guys. This is the Joyous Noel 6x6 Glimmer Paper from the Holiday Catalog. It comes in copper, Merry Merlot and Tranquil Tide. How gorgeous is this? And let me tell you a little something about this new glimmer paper. The glitter stays on the paper. It's not everywhere. Look, look at me. Just, just flipping it everywhere. The old glimmer papers, we'd have had some issues with glitter everywhere. Also, the backing is now much thinner, so it's very much easier to cut, a la pine cones. Okay, so I think you're gonna love this. Now what I'm gonna do is with the sprig punch, I'm gonna cut myself another couple of pieces, another couple of sprigs. I do love this little punch. It looks like sprigs. Of course, it also looks like reindeer antlers, right? So you get multiple uses out of it. All right, so let's look and start making our layers so that we can do a little dry fitting. And I'm gonna make one shorter. I'm gonna put a, apparently I have a little glue on my, I have a little glue on my tweezers. So I'm gonna layer my glittery and my not glittery like this. And I'm gonna tear off that bottom piece just to make it easier to make it little. And then we're gonna do the same on the bottom half, like so. Okay. Cut this off a little bit. And just so you know, that was already the shortest of the pine boughs in the pretty pine set and then this is going to go like that like so so i think that's about right so let's go ahead and start sticking it down <laughs> i know karen it's hard isn't it it's really hard because every time you turn the page you see one and you go oh yeah i, I need that too mm -hmm. i got you kid i'm picking up what you're putting down that's Thank God for that discount, right? Thank goodness for that discount. And now that I'm running a business, I, I can also justify it in my head, well, this is a business expense. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna write it off, yeah. I tell my husband that and he just looks at me like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, sure, Mayor, sure. You betcha. There we go. But I figure if he can write off his toys, I mean his tools, then I can do the same, right? So there we go. Alrighty, and there's the top piece. Oops, get off my finger. Get off my finger. There we go. Alright. So I splurged for myself and, and upgraded the first class to go home this weekend because, well, First off, I don't want to have to mail half of my things home. So I'll now have two free bags. Actually, I could have three if I went and bought a new bag. I could have three free bags, and they can be 70 pounds a piece. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go buy another bag because that's cray-cray. And also, I don't want to do it. Didn't even show the August special, but I bought a bunch of cards I made with the Blended Seasons bundle and four people decided. Yes, Blended Seasons is almost up. There's, a, I'm gonna have a card or two by the end of the week with that. 
All right, so if you are looking for blended seasons, y'all, it's time to, time to get off the stick. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the top and bottom edges only of my Sentimente so that it'll straddle that ribbon and not have a, a ribbon hump, as it were. We'll just stick that on. Like so. Put him like that. And then we're going to add our beautiful coppery glimmery. I've got an extra PC right there. Okay. Pine cone. Still loving pretty pine. Still one of my very, very favoritest. Okay. Give him a stick right there. And now we're going to make a double loop bow. Once I find my linen thread, hang on a minute. It was right here just a half a second ago. Just a half a second ago. Huh. I carefully set it out so that I would have it. And now I have just as carefully lost it. How nice. See, this is, it is a frangible skill. Facebook Lives are frangible skills, which means if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's what I've done, is lost the skill of doing. So here's another pack, we'll use it. We're gonna make us a bow, a double loop. Amy, give it back, give it back. Okay, now. You might, guys remember how to do this bow? We're gonna wrap four times around four fingers. Two, three, four. And then two, four times around two fingers. Two, three, four. And then carefully pry it off of said fingers. And give it a snip. Squeeze it together and give it a twist like that into a figure eight. And then I like to grab it with my tweezers to hold it since I have not yet grown a third hand. And then I'm gonna tie the middle with another little piece of linen thread. Okay, whoops. You guys have the yard house restaurant where you live? I think there's a yard house in other places besides here. If you do, I would highly recommend going there immediately. Tonight would be good. And availing yourself of the s'mores brownie dessert. Now a couple of the guys got that last night. We went to dinner and it came out. They said, well this is enough to share and we should have caught the clue because they brought stacks of plates and spoons. Yes, that was a billy, a billy bow, correct? Um, and we still didn't think much of it until three people ordered the s'mores brownie and it came in a, a oven skillet about this big. And it's this beautiful, chewy, gooey brownie and on top is marshmallows that they have toasted, like a s'more. I did not order one. I did, however, eat three or four spoons full of, well, they were they were insisting that we share with them. Insisting, and what else could I do? I have to be part of the team. Oh my goodness gracious, people, that was the very bestest thing I have eaten in one heck of a long time. I am talking some kind of good. I could have eaten the whole thing. I would have then had to go in and be violently ill because it was really, really rich, but oh my goodness. So if you have a yard house restaurant anywhere around you, please go get you a s'mores brownie. Okay, so the trick of a billy bow is to get it tied up and then mess around with it. And this one is trying to be persnickety, you can see. Now I know some people don't mind those twists in their linen thread, but that just bugs me no end. So I'm hoping it'll go away. If it won't, well, I suppose it is what it is. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a little dab of glue, little dab will do me, and I'm going to put my billy bow right over the top of that. 
Some people get real head up if their sentiment is covered. I personally kind of like it. So it's my card and it's gonna be covered. Now I'm going to take a couple of lengths of copper metallic thread and a length of linen thread. And as I said, I'm using two pieces of copper thread. And this is a little persnickety, not gonna lie, but it's worth doing, I think, because it puts just enough bling in the bow. So what I have is two lengths of copper thread and one length of linen thread, and then I'm just gonna tie a simple bow with that. Okay, and then just mess around with it until it's how you want it. And I usually leave my tails relatively long because I like that kind of messy look for these bows. Now, if you're given, if you're leaving comments or asking questions, I'm not seeing them right this second. Okay, there we go. So I'm good. It's, that's a little too messy, even for me. So there we go. And then I'll just use another little bit of another little bit yard house or chart house um it's a yard house here i suppose it's possible linda that those are connected so anywhere that you see what they call a s'mores brownie just get it it can't be bad it may not be exactly the same but it isn't going to be bad so i'm just putting a little dab of liquid glue there and i'm going to stick that on like that and just leave them be now I have some pearls. These happen to be pearls that are left from the wonderful, beautiful, awesome Timeless Tidings project kit. And all I've done is used my dark cherry cobbler Stampin' Blend to color a couple of those. And I'm just gonna stick them strategically about to give a little pop of fun color. Right there, looks like a good one. And I think right here. There we go. No, I like it right there. We'll go right there. There. And there's our card front. And I'm not going to mat it quite yet. And you'll see why in just a second. So I'm going to set that aside. And then we're going to sort of repeat the process for the innards. I'll remind you what the inside looks like. I've got the embossed piece and then a torn center piece and a mat. All right. So this is going to be my liner. This is going to be the mat and a second mat. So it's a double matted mat mat. Good. All right, so first off, what I'm going to do is stamp my, um, stamp my sentiment on the inside. Sorry. I'm going to stamp my sentiment on the inside. And I'm using this second sentiment from Cross Stitch Christmas. I'm not sure, Susan, I didn't see the conversation about the snail, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. So I'm just gonna ink him up and we're gonna put him right in the middle. But let me show you before I mess that up. I need to do this a different direction, different way, different way, people, different way. So first I'm gonna tear this down. See, I almost screwed that up. Why? Because I need to put this, I want to put this on an angle, but I want my sentiment to be straight, which means I need to put it, I need to know what that angle is going to look like, right? So first I'm going to tear it down, and then we're going to do a little distressolating with our sponge daba. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Peggy. Appreciate it. Okay, you guys, fill me in. What did y'all forget about the snail adhesive? Don't leave a sister hanging out there. All right, back to, to my sponge dauber. And we're gonna give this a little bit of a distress here. This has to be one of my favorite kinds of cards. I like these subdued colors with the little pops of the bling and the color like the cherry cobbler. 
and the distressed of the edges, and of course, all the layering. I'm a layerer. I don't really like, I don't do clean and simple very easily. I like them when I get them done, but I have a hard time with them. I actually think harder on those than I do on these for some reason. All right, let's be sure. That is correct, Sue. The uh, multi-purpose liquid glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Okay, that'll be perfect right there. I've got the right size. That's what I was looking for. And we'll hit this with some of our crumb cake to raise that grain. Isn't that pretty how that brings that out like that? It's just like sanding and staining a real piece of wood brings out that pretty, pretty wood grain. All of a sudden, what you couldn't really see very well, there it is. Like magic. Oh yes, Susan, that is that is true. It has some issues with that, that's no doubt. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our mat on our mat, if you will, or our inner liner on our mat, however you like to call it. It's about the size of a real inner liner, a normal inner liner for my card, so that's what I'm gonna call it. This is the inner liner and that's being matted on Mossy Meadow, just like the front. Now, I'm not gonna glue this down until I have stamped my sentiment because, uh, hello, that's just asking for trouble, just asking for trouble. But I wanna see how it's gonna look on there, and then I want to make my sentiment straight. Right, also right side up. Right side up would be good. And we'll hold that down for a second to get a good stamp, and that worked out well. And then we'll dive into one of my other favorites, Winter Woods, which has dies to cut out all these beautiful images. Hello! And let's pull out the bow and the pine cone. And we're going to put a couple of little pine cone boughs. Like so. Okay. And then I'm going to attempt to find my soft sleeve. And we're going to put us a pine cone. A pine cone. A little tiny pine cone. Here it is. Now see, I've got, this is the top of the pine cone, so I'm gonna put it up just to make my life a little easier so that I know where it is. And you can see it corresponds with that piece right there, so I'm gonna turn it and stick it right there like that. Good enough. And let's put another one of those little doodahs down here. that. We'll set these aside for now and put this on our Agreed, Amy. I don't think a lot of people are using the snail much anymore. I think a lot of people, this is their go-to adhesive right here. And then we'll just make that crookedy and the sentiment straight. All right. And then let's put him inside our cherry cobbler card base. Oops, don't need to put that dimensional cover in there. I can't wait to get home and so I have my little wiggle butt waiting around to grab dimensional covers for me. But oh my goodness, speaking of getting home and videos, I'm not entirely sure, you guys, if I'm gonna be able to get it together to do a video next Sunday. When, I, when last I saw my crafting area, 
To say that it was a hoorah's nest is an understatement of nearly epic proportions, so it may take me a minute or two days to get it back to a place where I could possibly do a video. So please watch my blog post and uh, my blog post will tell you whether I'm doing a video or not and my, uh, my uh, Facebook page will tell you if I am doing a video. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on the front is first I'm going to adhere my mossy meadow mat directly to the card base. And I don't know why I decided to do it this way this time, but I did and I like it so. So there you have it, like that. And then I'm gonna pop my card front onto that with dimensionals. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary, I appreciate that. If I can get it together and get my set, my spot back in any kind of logical order, we'll do a video, but gosh, it was a mess. I had such a short amount of time at home that anything that I needed to grab from there, I just was tossing stuff like crazy. So I don't want to, expectation management, that's a thing in the military, expectation management. Be expecting to not have a video, and then if I'm able to get it together, it'll be a happy surprise. How about that? All right. Now, pulling these off. You see my hole where I cut out my... Now, this is just a thing, so um, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I prefer to not cut out of the middle of the mat on my inside liner because if I want to write on there or if I send the card to someone and they want to write, I think there's the possibility of like an uneven spot that could screw up what they're writing and that's that's never good. Nobody likes that to happen. So that's just me. I usually only cut out of the middle of my front liner where it isn't really gonna matter. Thank you very much, Linda, that's very sweet. Thanks, Karen. All right, thank you, Donna, I appreciate you. <laughs> thank you, Jean, that's very, very sweet. Okay, so I'm just popping this on over my mat, like so. And that is it for the card front. I am gonna trim those up a little bit. They look a little too wonky okay but that's good right there all right and I sort of love that people I love the layered look all right now I'm going to show you another little trick because I'm going to use I'm going to decorate my envelope because well that's what I do and I'm going to show you a trick with the stamparatus and envelope flaps and I don't need this right now so I have no idea why I just pulled it out so first I'm going to, on the front, I'm going to stamp some more of the little winter woods pine boughs in the corners. Like this in Mossy Meadow. And then we'll um, do a soft suede pine cone. Isn't that a cute little pine cone? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I love that pine cone so much. Okay, here comes the big trick. You ready? Ready for the big finish? Hopefully I can do it. All right, so I've got Mr. Stamparatus back out and I'm going to take out the photopolymer pad and then I'm going to, oops, I'm going to adhere my two magnets together what I'm going to do is I'm getting a kind of a clean sheet here. Okay. And I'm pulling out my plaid. See what I'm doing? I'm showing I'm, this is what I'm working on. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this. This is a little trick I taught myself just the other day. All right, so first I pick this up and then I ink it. Okay, you ready for this? This is almost a miracle, -y. miracle, miracle. Okay, and then I'm gonna stamp my grid paper. 
like this. Shirley Gentry, you can find the background stamp. It's in the it's in the catalog, I promise you. Okay, so now, don't move that. Now what I'm gonna do is give that a little wave so it all dries. And then I'm gonna take my envelope and I'm gonna lay it right there so that the crease is right on the edge of that stamped spot. And I'm actually gonna edge it a little bit. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit of a buffer. And it's not quite wide enough, which is fine. I'm going to magnetize him down and then I'm going to stamp him like so. And you can see what I've done in theory Hold your breath, everybody, in case it doesn't work, because it almost never works when you're on. You should laminate the paper and then just reuse it after wiping it up. I could certainly do that, Mary, but I have a lot of this stuff, so. All right, look at that, a perfect envelope flap. And I didn't even have to sticky note off my the front of my envelope. I did, however, manage to get ink everywhere on the front of the envelope because, have I mentioned I'm a piggy? That'll be okay. It's a very rustic, and it'll be covered mostly by the address. So there you go. One each with a couple of new things. We've got the Buffalo Check background stamp. We have the cross-stitched Christmas stamp. And on the inside, I've got some Winter Woods images. And then, of course, from the annual catalog, we've got the wood... Uh, pinewood planks and some pretty pines thinlets and of course the antler slash sprig punch also known as just the sprig punch all right folks i really 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 hope you enjoyed this and i am really 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 glad to be back and looking forward to recommencing once i get home and get back together so watch for updates about whether i'm going to be able to do a video next week Watch for the blended seasons, time to get in on that. And in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to order from this catalog. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.